person who's going to tell you everything there is to know about it is Richard Jones. Thank you. Good afternoon. Thanks for coming. <laughs> My name is uh, Richard Jones. I work at Red Hat. And I'm going to be talking today a bit about LibGuestFS, which is a, a C library and a suite of tools including Vert Builder, Vert SysPrep, Vert Sparsify, and much, much more. But before I start, I just wanted to sort of get an idea, to sort of give you an idea of what exactly I'm talking about today. So I'm just going to build a Fedora 20 complete virtual machine. Take about uh, 20 seconds or so. Uh, this is starting from, a, starting from a template and cloning it, giving it a random seed and root password. Uh, and we can use tools like Guestfish to just open this uh, disk image and make automated changes inside it. So, for example, I can, uh, if you wanted to, if you want to have a virtual machine that always started up with a particular message, you could you could use something like Guestfish or, or our C API to make these automated changes to it. So that's what libguestfest basically does. And I'm going to start a, I'm going to start running a little script. It looks a bit complicated, but actually all it is is a while loop that goes round and round. It's going to keep running Vert Builder while I'm talking. So let's set that. Uh, Let's set that going. And we'll come back to that in just 10 minutes. So what does Vert Builder do? Vert Builder can build you a CentOS 6 guest in this case. It can change the format of the output disk image or the size using Vert Resize and using libguestfs to go in there and resize the partitions and the logical volumes correctly so the guest is already resized when it starts running. Uh, it can change the host name, time zone, you can install packages, you can edit configuration files in many different ways, uh, and you can run scripts at various points during the build, uh, including um, when it's building, or if you prefer, in this case, um, when it actually first boots. Um, Burt Builder does not install guests from scratch, and that's really what I'm going to talk about today. It doesn't run Anaconda or Debian installer because that would take far too long. Instead, it clones clean, cryptographically signed, impressed templates, and it customizes them for you. The guestfest can safely and securely uh, modify disk images without requiring roots. Now, Vert Builder comes with a handful of templates, uh, but what I'm really going to talk about today is how you can prepare your own. And over the years, we have come up with a good way to prepare and distribute uh, small templates. I think the microphone is a bit off. Could you use this for a second? Sure. Um, so over the years we've come up with a way to um, prepare and distribute small templates. And this is the method that we, we use now. Uh, Vert install runs the regular operating system installer, so it does in fact run Anaconda or Debian installer, or Windows installers and so on, and you can completely automate it using Preseed or Kickstart. Uh, you could also use Oz here instead if you wanted to. Vert sysprep unconfigures uh, the guest, and it's using libguestfs, it's going to go in there, it can remove things like SSH keys, which you don't want to have when, you've clo when you clone a guest. You don't want them to all have the same SSH key. It can do things like removing log files, which is pretty important when you, um, when you, you don't want to give away how your guest was created. So it's a good idea to scrub things like log files. It can get rid of persistent network configuration. And there are about 20 different operations that Vert Sysprep can do. And Vert Sparsify is the next one. Now, when you've installed a guest, um, Vert Sparsify can go in there and actually make that guest disk image sparse or thin provisioned, as some people call it. Now, using libguestfs again, it goes and looks deep inside the file system. It, it can find unused space in things like deleted files, um, inside unused swap, uh, in deleted logical volumes or partitions that are simply not used. And it can find blocks which, although they're not actually zeros, in the disk image are actually not used. And it can give that space back to the operating system by making the disk image sparse. And as you can see, it's very easy to use just a, a simple command like that. And the final step is, is XZ. Now, XZ, we, we really like XZ for a few reasons. XZ is nearly best in class 
compression. It's not, it's not perhaps the very, very best compression, but it's way better than GZIP or BZIP2 or something like that. Importantly, XED preserves sparseness. Of course, if you've gone to all the trouble of running Vert Sparsify, you don't want to decompress your clone disk image and find that your sparseness is all gone. It's all fully allocated again. And the other thing about XSED is it has a brilliant API and a brilliant file format. It's all well documented, and it allows us to do all sorts of clever stuff. So we've got a sister project called NBD Kit. It's an NBD network block device server, and it allows you to um, it allows you to serve a compress an XSED compressed disk image presented as uncompressed to someone consuming NBD. But it doesn't do that by uncompressing the whole XSED image before it starts, what it does is it just uncompresses the little bits that you're actually reading at the time. And it can do this because the XSED API allows random access to the, to the compressed file. And the other thing we've done with XSED, uh, Vert Builder includes a custom uncompressor, which is way faster than an XSED or XSED cat. I mean, I mean, on my laptop, it's like four times faster. So when you see Vert Builder running, it has an uncompressed tep, takes 10 seconds. That normally takes like 40 seconds if you just use XSED cat. So what's the result of all this? Well, there we go. So I'm going to take uh, just one row of this, the Fedora 20 image. Well, you can see it's, um, these are all in megabytes. The Fedora 20 container is 6 gigabytes. That doesn't really mean very much. I mean, you just, when you're installing a guest, you plug in a number. In this, in this case, it was 6 gigabytes. Most of that's empty space. But in fact, 826 megabytes of it is actually used by the Fedora core packages. So it's quite a lot. But after sparsification and XSED compression, it's down to 174 megabytes. It's important to say here that this isn't like the most minimal disk image ever. It's sure it's way it's possible to go much smaller than this. However, we have done this without doing any nasty tricks like deleting files from the guest. You know, we don't delete the documentation, we don't remove the package manager or anything like that. The only things we change are configuration files, you're allowed to change those, that's fine. And we've scrubbed log files. So we've got a trustworthy, faithful representation of that guest. And we can distribute this over broadband. Vert Builder caches the image, so you only have to download it once anyway, and you can create you know, thousands of Fedora 20 guests from, from a single download anyway. So it's fine. Well, I, I set Vert Builder off running earlier on, so let's see how it's going. Well, you see there, it's, so it's, it's created 24 guests, and it's... it's working on guest number 25 at the moment. If we just give that a second, you can see that uncompression step took about nine seconds. The whole Vert Builders kind of spits out images every kind of 15, 20, 25 seconds. It really depends on exactly how you uh, configure the, um, the guest. You know, if you, if you install packages, it takes a bit longer. Uh, if, you, if you use Vert Resize, that takes a bit longer as well. But, but a basic guest, you know, it's, it can spit it out that was quite long on 20, 27 seconds, but usually about 20 seconds or so. I'm going to actually, uh, I'm just actually going to kill. No, I'm not going to kill it now. I'll do that later. Okay. And finally, this is my last slide. LibGuestFest.org is the website. We have many, many, many more tools using LibGuestFest. We have a stable C API. We have bindings in about maybe a dozen programming languages. Um, almost certainly your Linux distro already includes LibGuestFest, so it's just an apt-get or a yum install or whatever your package manager is away, and it'll just work for you, hopefully. And if it doesn't, do join us on the IRC channel or the mailing list and tell us about it, please. So that's the end of my talk uh, in eight minutes. And I'm just going to type in some commands and show you some more stuff unless people want to ask questions. Let's just kill the vert builder that was running, and I can, uh, I can just create another Fedora 20 guest. Anyone got any questions about anything? Wow. You got a got a question over there. You wait for the microphone again. That's a very good question, and the answer is not right now. However, it will work very very soon. We 
Correct, yes. The question was, um, can you use Vert Builder with a base image and then basically creating a diff or, or a, a, an overlay, which is, of course, much more efficient, much smaller? Um, the answer is it doesn't right now, but it will do in about a month's time when we've finished that, that set of patches for it. It is, it is actually the most requested feature. Got a question up over there? Yeah, you had this slide with all those uh, nice utilities. For example, Word diff. Is it a special custom version of diff, or is it just the ordinary diff put on top of libgsfs? It is. Uh, so the question was: Is Vert diff is that ordinary diff, or is it a special diff? It it is a special tool, but it does use regular diff. So what it does is it it takes two disk images, and it uses the libgsfs API to iterate over the file systems in both images. So that, that's the custom code. But then when it finds a file that's changed, it runs diff on that file and then presents you with a diff-like output. Is that, is that an answer to your question? Question, this guy here, yes? Um, no, I, uh, this, the, yeah, I didn't really catch the question, but it's about another um, compression tool. Okay. Uh, is it okay now? Yep. Okay. Uh, I have m made some tests with uh, LRZip to um, thin provisioning, and my results were a little bit better right. than with the Sparsify. Okay, so you're, you're correct that LR, well, the, the next Z, but yeah, the LR zip is, I mean, XZ is not absolutely the best compression tool out there. There are ones which will give you a megabyte or two better than XZ, but it's still extremely good. And because it has such a well-defined API, it's, it's useful in many other ways. Uh, another question? We've got maybe two minutes for questions. Question there, in the middle. The question is, will it manipulate any sort of guest image? The answer is yes. We use Linux kernel code and Linux kernel, uh, sorry, Linux utilities. So we handle Windows guests. I mean, basically, if you could plug a disk into a Linux computer and if Linux could read it, then we could read it. So um, do you, uh, I noticed you using QCal, uh, which is something you use for KVM, right? Yeah, so the question is, we're using, Q, we support QCow and we use KVM. And yes, we use uh, KVM to decode the QCow um, layer. Um, the question is, do we support all the formats like VHD? And the answer is yes, we support anything that QME supports, and QME does support VHD, and it supports um, uh, VMDK and obviously RAW. So yeah, I mean, we support everything that, that QME and Linux supports. Uh, do you plan to implement some tool to yeah. So the question is, do we do we plan to get templates from other sources? The answer is yes. We don't want to supply templates. We only have a few, as you can see. What we really want to do is we want to use the cloud images that distros are already publishing, and all we're going to do is add metadata. So we're just going to add metadata about those cloud images and download the cloud images, and the distros are going to host those. So that's that's the plan. And again, we're looking at maybe a month or two to have that implemented. Thank you. I think that's uh, that's about all. Okay. Well, thanks for listening, everyone. Hope you enjoyed it. And <laughs> okay. And there's there's a Ceph talk coming up next, and we can actually read Ceph directly from Ceph. So. Thank you very much, uh, Richard.